What up my ninjas, I'm Dalla Jorge, and welcome to my review of Owari. Season 4 finale, which really delivered in terms of intensity. We've, uh, for one thing, closed the book on the Shredder versus Hamato clan conflict. It's bittersweet to me because on the one hand the Shredder has been so monumental in the show, and I don't really know what to expect from the t for the Turtles from here on out. On the other hand though, this show has done pretty much every profound thing you could do with the Shredder. And I'm, I'm accepting, maybe even embracing, the end of this saga before things get overly repetitive. Now, since we're talking about intensity though, the action, that it really built the suspense towards that final fight against the Shredder. That was actually the highlight for me. All the four turtles against their big bad villain, it really uh, showcased how well coordinated they've become. I've never seen their dynamic that flawless before. I, oh jeez, I, I Oh, I'm so impressed. I am so impressed with the turtles' growth. And what really highlighted that for me as well was the main message of this episode. It was all about overcoming fear and uncertainties, especially for Leo. Uh, we first learned that lesson, I should say the turtles first learned that lesson in Panic in the Sewers, the episode immediately after their first fight against the Shredder. Now this is a lesson they're revisiting a, um, with their last fight against the Shredder, so... Talk about full circle and depth. That said, that's not all. The turtles first overcame their fears um, after a victory high, actually. They, you know, took out the Krang's mutagen bomb. On top of that, they actually were, what was the word for it? Oh, I don't know. Cocky over taking down Bradford and Zever. Now, this time around in Owari, that final fight against the Shredder isn't actually, isn't humbling for them. It actually builds up their confidence. Keep that in mind. They've grown so much that their fight against the Shredder actually improves their self-esteem. I still have a couple of issues with the uh, episode. First off, the animation in two specific scenes for me kind of highlighted how CG'd our characters are. And that being said, the animation throughout the rest of the episode was on point, um, rather fluid, especially in action scenes, so a minor thing to talk about. What wasn't so minor was the character development and lack of it. The thing about the turtles is that they've just lost their father, right? So while they're gearing up, I'm actually expecting to see more sadness from them and that they're leaning on one another. We didn't really see that emotional depth in as they geared up and sometimes even during their fight. So it felt like just another season finale where they're out to save the world. It was only the very beginning and the very end where we really saw those emotional aspects from the turtles and that doesn't really sit well with me. Whatever evil emerges, we'll be ready because we're awesome! Let's talk about the very opening scene, the funeral of Hamato Yoshi, also known as Master Splinter, right? Right out of the gate? That's hard hitting, like, Splinter's not coming back. What was also especially profound was, was the lack of words. No one saying anything, maybe nor, nor should they, because what can they say to actually describe what Splinter meant to them and how devastated they are? Now what felt unnatural for me was how still everyone was. Like no one's really reaching out and comforting each other except for Casey comforting April. And maybe that's on purpose because the turtles and their allies are that lost and that uh, shaken. But as I said, if Casey, who has been so insensitive sometimes, can reach out and comfort April without meaning anything by it. They're, he's not flirting with her, he's like, I'm here for you, that's it. Why can't Slash reach out to Raphael, like, I'm here for you, brother? Why can't Leatherhead hug Mikey? who might even be bawling during the funeral, I can see that happening. Not, it's not going to increase the length of time in that scene, but just those little moments of connections to show that they're leaning on one another and they have each other's backs, even, or maybe especially in times of struggle. I don't know. Per, that's my personal, uh, one personal issue with that scene. But as I said, it was overall still rather profound. I want to talk about the turtles for a second here. I know I said off the top that they didn't really have time to shine, which is still kind of true, but they had their moments in battle at least. They're, let's talk about Raph first off, because his moment against Fishface, how ruthless was that? 
but not in an angry way, not in a, I'm going to ditch my brothers to vent my anger. It was a, you've tried to hurt me and my family, you're gonna learn what I can do. I, I'm gonna be honest, I've forgotten that aspect of Raph's warrior personality. Um, I'm used to the passion, I just forgot about the ruthlessness and even sometimes bloodthirsty and twisted aspect of Raph's warrior side. I appreciate seeing that again. Besides that, Raph momentarily took out the shredder. He didn't let his anger take him too far again. He uh, let his skills speak for themselves. He was so hard hitting that the shredder, as I said, couldn't quite handle it. And that was still really impressive from Raph, or from any of the turtles to begin with. Um, Donnie had his technological prowess in battle, that was awesome. But, but I want to appreciate that Donnie didn't hold his brothers back, nor did his brothers have to compensate for his lack of battle skills in any way. He was where he needed to be at every point of the uh, of the turtles uh, raid, so that was much that was deeply appreciated. Now, Mikey, in the first episode, we saw how fast he can be, but we haven't there we haven't really seen that consistently. This episode we saw it again. That was impressive. I wish they carried that out a little further, a little longer in his uh, in his kind of solo battle. But I do appreciate what we got. Passing into death, we merge with the whole of life. We become one in all of nature, even with you. Now, I want to talk about Master Splinter for a second here. He appeared to uh, Leo and had some very sweet words to say. I didn't think it was appropriate for uh, Splinter to put this burden of, yeah, this mission that I couldn't succeed, your turn. That didn't feel right. But you can also, you know, interpret it as Splinter so confident in his sons that he knows they can do what he couldn't even this early in their lives which is still rather profound and beautiful. You're a monster, a demon. Is that your destiny? Let's get into Leo here. He um, he was more or less the hero of this episode, what with his emotional struggles and his one-on-one -on -one battle against the Shredder. I think a lot of fans saw this coming. I've seen several fan fictions kind of highlighting this scene uh, where it's Leo against the Shredder. And I appreciate that it was the son not the father, not Splinter, that took Leo, sorry, that took the Shredder down. I want to mention, uh, on top of that, how far he's come as a leader. Keep in mind, his first fight with his brothers against the Crane, their first fight to Topside, he actually stabbed Wrath in the back. He was that unaware of his brothers, of their surroundings, and he's come to the point where not only is he aware of what they're doing, he develops incredibly efficient plans, improvises on the spot. It's He's amazing. I'm, I'm really impressed with him. His um, moral standing has, gone, has come to the point where he's willing to shoulder burdens so his brothers don't have to. I worry about that for his future, but I think his brothers are, you know, they're there for him, so they're not going to, they're not gonna let him cripple himself under the weight of all these burdens. Now, I did mention off the top that this episode was all about uh, overcoming fear, and that was especially true for Leo. He knows, you know, how important it is to kind of keep a cool head. What I was surprised by was that his fear didn't affect him in battle. Even when Tiger Gloss straight up asked him how scared he was going into the future, Leo didn't miss a beat. He actually went even harder against Tiger Claw. So that really told me that not only was he keeping he wasn't keeping a false bravado anymore. Sure, he was emotional during his battles, but um, he didn't let his fear get to him. So I really do applaud him for that. Or maybe that was a consistency thing. I thought after the death of your master that he would flee from the city as you did before. Afraid to face me. Afraid to embrace your fate. <sighs> the Shredder. As Leo said, he's a monster. He's become quite demonic. But it wasn't his fate to become so. He's been so busy blaming others, um, he's so delusional as well, but I appreciated that Leo's question hit home. That says so much, because he let several external circumstances control him. He let Splinter control so much of his life. He uh, let vengeance ruin him. 
to the point where he lost himself. I know a lot of fans, including myself of the show, uh, thought it was unfair for Splinter to die, but the Shredder to live even another day, knowing that he beat Splinter, Splinter didn't get to live a life without being hunted. But the powerful thing about Splinter was that he didn't let, except for, you know, maybe a few, you know, episodes, <coughs> Panic in the Sewers, cough. Uh, besides that episode, he didn't let the fear of the Shredder control him. He still led a very happy life with his, with his turtles, with his sons. So even though he died too soon, he still had a full life. That's something the Shredder never had, even after defeating Splinter. He was still, you know, he was still a demon. He still lost his humanity, whereas Splinter never lost sight of it. And we'll do it together. Right, Sensei? Wow, it has gotten dark up in here. I apologize for that. I hope you guys still appreciated this review. Feel free to comment down below on everything you liked about this review and about the episode. If anything I said doesn't sit well with you, let me know down below too, because I'm all about a good-natured debate. I do have a question for the day to kind of get those gears running. I want to know what you're looking forward to in Season 5. And we'll talk again soon for the first episode of Season 5. Until then, my ninjas.